Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad today. <laughs> Praise God. Can we just bless the name of the Lord? Father, we thank you for today. Hallelujah. Your truth is precious. It is precious. So we receive it with a thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I remember I was telling you a story yesterday before our time, you know, uh, you know, so, so this man went to this car dealership and then he was, he was looking around and he said, which, which car in particular um, are you looking for? He said, oh, I'm looking for something, you know, I can't remember, the, the person told me exactly the car. You know, so, so I'm looking for this, um, he didn't have the money, but, but he's there because the Lord commanded him to go. And so he was there looking around and then he saw this particular car that he liked. And so he said, okay, I, I want this one. I want to bring the key for this one. And then they brought the key. He said, start it. They started it, opened the engine. He was just looking around and admiring the car. And then now there was this other man that came with a young lady. Now in his own mind, this, this man is a Nigerian. This, this, this is an alhaji, and then this is probably his young wife or his girlfriend or something. <clears throat> so while they were there, you know, trying out this car and just looking around the car, suddenly the girl came and said ah, that this is the car that she wanted. That this is the exact car, the exact color <clears throat> that she wanted. And then the man just said, ah, then this is the one. So when, when that happened, some, for some reason, <clears throat> he just had this courage. He said, ah, but, but that's the car I'm buying. And then this allergy turned to him and said, see, this thing, this girl has troubled me for this car. And until I buy this car, I will not have rest. You know what we are going to do? Please, let me buy this car for her. You choose another color. I will pay for it. That's how the guy got the car. <laughs> True story. <clears throat> you you want to tell me that God cannot buy a car with one? So imagine it, it, at home, God said, go get a car. And say, God, please stop that joke. With what? Is it mouth there? Is it to buy a car? <laughs> oh, yes, but he bought a car with his mouth. Praise God. That's God for you. Now, now you will not understand this. You see, now, there are some of you have experienced God's blessing like this just once, last year, two years ago, five years ago. I'm talking about consistently. You be consistent with this. I'll tell you the secret today. Tithing. Where that money came to you, the first thing you do, say, Father, I acknowledge you today, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for this blessing. I acknowledge that this blessing came from you. And we've seen God's blessing. We've enjoyed. No, no, we've, no, we have. We are even going to enjoy it today. Why? Because we have learned to acknowledge God in all our ways. Praise God. So, so we're talking about provision. This is the secret. Lord, thank you. Thank you. You are trusting him already to direct your part in your finances. Like I said, this young, this, no, this, this man in this Luke chapter 12, you know that's the story we're talking about. He got covetous because he didn't consult. He didn't consult the Lord. He didn't bring his tithe before the Lord. It's not about taking your money to church. You know, you have become so religious about tithing that you don't even enjoy the blessing of that. So you find lots of believers that have been tithing for many years, have not seen any result in your life. You have not been tithing. You have just been giving church your money. But it's 10%. Yes, it doesn't mean God is accepting it. So how do you prove that God accepted your money? But now I'm telling you that when you take it before the Lord and he tells you what you should do with it, that is proof that he has accepted it. This is not man. We're not dealing with a man. We're dealing with God himself. He is our life. He speaks. How can I sound this loud in your heart? He speaks. Let him speak to you. Honor him. Acknowledge him. He 
now direct your path in prosperity. You will realize that lack is gone completely from you. you realize that covetousness is gone completely from your heart. You know why? Because you are going to begin to see miracles and miracles and miracles. And one day you tell yourself, come on. I mean, right? you, you know, I, I say that sometimes. You know, like, you know what? See, God will just tell you one day. Say, go, 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 go get this thing. Go get a house. Okay, Lord, where? Go to Susan's place. Thank you, sir. And then you get there and you're negotiating. You're not going to be living your life based on your bank account. You're going to be living your life based on your heavenly bank account. Everything that Jesus owns, you own. So God said, go get a car. And then you're there waiting. God says, I will get the car. See, God said, go get the car. And then you're here. Say, boy, God spoke to me this morning. Oh, wow. What did he say? He said, I will get the car very soon. I will get the car very soon. And then you begin to look out for the money. You begin to look out for the money. You begin to look out. You are wondering, what kind of business can I do now? What kind of what kind of miracle will happen right now? But he has said, go get the car. <clears throat> Be careful. Uh, Solomon said, in all, you know, Solomon says, let your eyes observe my saying. When God is speaking to you, observe, did he speak in past tense? Did he speak in present tense? Did he speak in present continuous tense? Or did he speak in futuristic tense? Is he saying, I will? Did he say, I have? Did he say, I am? It will help you. Next, trust in the Lord with all your heart. This man did not trust in the Lord with all his heart. He trusted in his riches. And God called him a fool. Why did God call him a fool? Because he didn't acknowledge God. So he actually said in his heart, there is no God. If he knew and believed in God, he would have acknowledged him. And then he would have thought of it, that what would God have me do with this great happiness that I've gotten? Because there is a reason. There is no blessing that comes to a child of God that has no purpose. God is a purposeful God. Look at Jesus. He said to the disciples, gather up the fragments so that nothing is wasted. It means that miracle of multiplication came for a purpose, not to be wasted. <clears throat> when you begin to acknowledge God like this, you will never waste your resources, number one. Number two, every money you spend will be on purpose. Sometimes you have a list of things you want to do. You don't even know how to go about them. You look at what you earn. It doesn't even cover half of your list. But what do you do? You'll be amazed. You're just praying and say, Lord, thank you. I just got this money and I'm honoring you, honoring you with my time. And then the Lord say, get one, two, three, done. Okay, sir. Now it's a command. It's not an appeal. It's a command. And let me tell you the truth. When God says, get one, two, three, done, he doesn't expect you to do it with your money. The moment God says, get one, two, three, done, you say, okay, sir, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Even if you spend your money getting it done, God is going to reimburse you. <laughs> Why? Because the, that, this is the secret. The moment God opens his mouth to tell you, do this, it means there have been provision made for that thing from heaven. So you see, if you go spend your money to do it, which there's nothing wrong with that except the Lord commands you not to, expect a reimbursement. And let me tell you the truth. When God is reimbursing, he doesn't reimburse with your currency exchange rates. He reimburses with heavenly exchange rates. Praise God. <clears throat> Now, imagine your currency to a dollar. You know, in the most, most world currencies rated against the dollar. So imagine, you, you tell how bad your country is by the rate of exchange to the dollar. That's how you tell how good or how bad your economy is. So think about how good your currency is when you think about the exchange rate to the heavenly currency, <laughs> praise God. And they're like, ah, this our country is bad. This our country is bad. Okay, think about, so what do you think the exchange rate is going to be? May God help us. See, Jesus said, 
to his disciples when they asked him, How, why couldn't we cast out the devil? Jesus said, because of your own belief. Now, they were taken aback when he said that. But we believe now. Actually, what Jesus meant was you don't have enough information to believe in this area. That's what Jesus meant. So see, I'm sharing all these things with you to help your belief. Why? Now you have heard. I leave you to the Holy Spirit. Let him begin to instruct you. Now when the Holy Spirit instructs you, remember that I said so. You remember I have talked about this area. So that should boost your faith. That should boost your belief in him. So the next time you hear the Lord telling you, go get a house. And all you have in your bank account is not something that looks like you can buy a broom. Remember what I have shared with you. Go get a house. <laughs> Praise God. Father, we bless you for this whole weekend, Lord. Lord, the purpose of these things we share is that you replicate it in the life of everyone that believes. So, Lord, I leave everyone that have received this message to you. Replicate every miracle, every blessing. Make them see that these words are true. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Have a best weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.